Hello, welcome to the podcast where I'm going to show you how we construct congruent angles in geometry and then I'm going to show you how we do the process with GeoGebra. Um, I first just want to show you the concept of why the construction works where we're going to um, construct any angle that we want to. We don't even care what the measure is, we'll just make the geometry behind the construction forces uh, the angle to be the exact same. So we really don't care what the measure is. Like on this triangle here, I'm going to show you how we're going to reproduce this angle E. Okay. Um, remember that when we do constructions that we only use a compass, right? That's where we get circles with so we can mark measurement length and reproduce it um, because of radii on a circle concept. And a straight edge just so we can draw straight lines and segments. But you know, computer software, our line tools here, like the one I'm going to use, automatically makes them straight, so that's like my straight edge. But we're going to use a compass here, and I'm going to show you how we construct this um, angle E here. So what we need to do is, we need to start with one of the sides of our angle. So I'm going to grab my ray tool, and I'm just going to put a ray down somewhere. The orientation, you know, the, the angle looking like this, pointing down, it doesn't have to be the same. My orientation of my ray could be like this. You know, an angle is an angle. So whatever our starting side is, the angle is how far it opens up. It's like this is just like a starting side. So this angle is how far um, it opened up to get to this segment. So orientation doesn't matter. And I'm going to show you by laying out my, my ray this way. It doesn't matter if they're the same direction or not. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to grab, um, we actually need to make an isosceles triangle where E is the vertex here. So I want to mark out congruent lengths on the sides here to make an isosceles triangle. So to do that, I'm going to grab my compass, right, the other tool we use, and I'm going to create just some radius. It doesn't matter how big our isosceles triangle is when we do this. It's just the point that we make one. Okay, so like this. This will be perfect here. So as I move my compass around, um, it's going to make a circle. And where the circle intersects my segments, it creates two congruent radii right here, right? So the isosceles triangle is getting formed. This leg right here is congruent to this leg right here. And the base is just this segment right here, right? There's our isosceles triangle that gets formed if we use the vertex as the center of a circle. Okay, it doesn't matter the size. So now what we want to do is we want to reproduce this isosceles triangle down here. Right? Let me group these up. So I'll take this. So really what we want to do is we want to reproduce this isosceles triangle Okay, down here. It doesn't matter if we rotate it, we're just rotating the angle. But the ray that we're going to make that goes off in this direction is going to be the exact same as this angle that we're making from up here. Okay, so what we need to do is we're going to grab our compass again. I didn't change the radius at all, right? So notice the pointer's on the center. Okay, I'm going to construct a congruent circle on my new ray down here where I'm making an angle. So I'm just going to repeat the circle here. Notice so the exact same because I kept the same radius. So right now we have one side of our isosceles triangle that we're forming, right? We have like this side here. So what we need to do is make this side. But if we don't have that triangle, how do we know exactly where our ray goes off to make this exact triangle here, right? A congruent triangle. So what we need to do is we need to measure the base. Okay, the base is actually made, right, when I put the triangle back on here, the base is made by these intersection points, right, that segment connecting the two intersection points of our circle. So this would be like one intersection point of our circle. We need to find the other one somewhere so I can connect them with a segment, right, that makes a congruent triangle. So what we're going to do is we're going to use circles again, and I'm going to change the color here. Uh, maybe we'll go blue. So I can make a new circle and we don't get them confused. Um, I'm going to make another circle where I'm going to measure this length of our base, right? That's what compasses help us do is measure length. So now that I got that set as my radius, then I'm just going to bring, notice the pointer here is on an intersection point, the center of a circle that I'm going to make. I'm going to just put it here on this intersection point here and I'm going to make my circle because my radius is on there, you know, it's the exact same circle that has the base of our triangle, right, 
as a radius. You see that? So really what we have here is this point, this intersection point, it's really the other end point of our base here, of our isosceles triangle. So now when I make a ray that goes through that point, I've actually made um, congruent triangles, which forces that angle to be congruent. See what I mean? So now when I move this isosceles triangle here, let's see how we did. Notice now we have a nice congruent angle here made. Okay, so that's the geometry. Let's try it with geogebra. Here's the triangle that I'm showing you here. Let's actually do that, except instead of E here, let's change the orientation of our angle. Let's reproduce angle K. You know, when I do this stuff, I like to keep the orientation actually going the same just because it helps my eye out. So I'm going to try to make them somewhat the same. So I'm going to put down a ray to start my angle here. So you have to start with the ray. Um, since I'm doing the red one, I'm going to make my ray. So grab your pointer tool, click on your ray here, and then change the color to red. Um, if you click on this line here and go down the bottom, we can change its thickness. So I'm just going to color coordinate everything so I know what I'm making and everything stays good with me. L is going to be the vertex of my angle. So what we did in the construction is we made a circle around K, right, so that we can make an isosceles triangle. So I'm going to grab the circle with center through point tool, all right, so there's two types to make circles, by the way, um, or two ways to, is there's a circle with center through point, which means you put a center point down, or you choose a point as a center of a circle, and then you click down another point that creates a point on the circle. Okay, that's what we're going to use right now. We're also going to be using the circle with center and radius tool, where we can choose a point to be a center of a circle, and then we can tell GeoGebra what radius we actually want to make, so we can force congruent triangles. So right now we're going to grab the circle with center through point tool, I'm going to make my isosceles triangle where K is the vertex here. My point's K, yours might not be K. Um, just correlate your letter to your variable to mine, but just know the position that I'm talking about. So I'm going to click on K. It makes the center. Now, Judge, we're just waiting for me to put my circle down. So I'm going to click on one of these segments here to make an intersection point. And that makes a circle. Right, so now you can see our isosceles legs here. The base is right here, this segment. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reproduce this exact same circle um, down here where L is my center, this, where I'm making my congruent angle. All right, so now uh, you got to take note of the labeling of your radius of your circle. Right, so m mine right now in the video is circle K. The radius is segment KN or NK doesn't matter so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my circle with center and radius tool and I'm gonna click on L where I'm gonna make my angle as the center of my circle now it asks me what radius do I want to use and I'm gonna use this exact same radius NK here so I'm gonna type NK it has to be in capital letters because that's how we label points in geometry I'm gonna click OK and it made a congruent circle to this one here, using this as a radius. So now as you change your N and your radius of your circle, the other one will change with it. So it's dynamic, it changes dynamically. So now what we have right here is the intersection point, just like we have here, right? So I'm gonna grab my new point tool and I'm gonna actually make that point. Because what we have to do now is we have to measure out the base of this isosceles triangle we're constructing by making this a radius or a segment length okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a circle over here that goes through point O that's kinda like my point N here and I'm going to use this base length of our isosceles triangle as the radius of a circle centered at this point O here okay so to do that I'm gonna grab my segment tool and I'm going to click on N as an endpoint of my segment, and I'm going to click on this other intersection. Even though there's not a point there, when I click on it, GeoGebra will make the intersection point. Okay, so now I know that this segment is segment NP. So over here, I'm going to grab my circle with center and radius. I'm going to create my circle center to O with this same radius here, this NP length that I made. So I'm going to go NP as my radius. 
And now that intersection point is actually going to be this point here because really what we just constructed oops, is this circle right here. That's what we have. Um, so this point to O is the same thing as this base here. So I know that I can make this a congruent angle at vertex L that goes through this other intersection point. Okay, so notice these are the exact same angle here. I'm going to make this ray blue, just oops, just so that it looks like part of my triangle. Okay, so there's a congruent angle. Thanks for watching this podcast.